Supreme Court seeks data of people who sent money abroad. Supreme Court on Thursday asked the State Bank of Pakistan to provide it with details of foreign currency transactions of $50,000 or more by Pakistani nationals who quietly siphoned off foreign currency to other countries over the past one year. A three-judge Supreme Court bench headed by Chief Justice of Pakistan, Mia Saqib Nisar, gave State Bank of Pakistan Governor Tariq Bajwa one week to submit details of all transactions involving tranches of $50,000 or more along with particulars of the individuals who made the transactions. Mifta Ismail takes oath as new finance minister of Pakistan. Mifta Ismail was appointed the new federal minister for finance, revenue and economic affairs on Friday. Ismail's appointment was recommended by Prime Minister Shahid Khan Abbasi and approved by President Mamoon Hussain. Following his ascension to the topmost job in the finance ministry, Ismail takes up his advisory role to the Prime Minister on finance, revenue and economic affairs. India and Afghanistan orchestrated suicide attacks, says Balochistan Chief Minister Abdul Quddus Bizinjo. Chief Minister Balochistan Abdul Quddus Bizinjo has accused India and Afghanistan of providing training to suicide bombers who blew themselves up in Quetta on Tuesday, marting at least seven Balochistan constabulary personnel and injuring 15 others, including eight Frontier Corps soldiers. We have been treating Afghan refugees as our guests and brothers for decades, but they respond with hate and unrest in Pakistan, said the Chief Minister during his visit to the civil hospital Quetta on Thursday. Opposition has done nothing except wasting nation's time, says Chief Minister Punjab. Chief Minister of Punjab, Shahbaz Sharif, on Friday said that political opponents have done nothing except wasting nation's time. In a statement, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz President Shahbaz Sharif said that Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf and Pakistan People's Party have disappointed the people with their negative politics. Nation is fed up by the destructive politics of the opposition, he added. Punjab Chief Minister asserted that PMLN is still a famous party in the country and it always gives first priority to national interest. Opposition leader in the National Assembly, Khurshid Shah, said Article 62 and 63 are black laws of Zia. In his statement, opposition leader Khurshid Shah maintained that he repeatedly asked Nawaz Sharif for his cooperation in eliminating the laws, but the former Premier did nothing. He urged that Parliament should be independent in taking its own decisions. While speaking about the federal budget said to be presented today in the Parliament, the opposition leader said that PMLN is setting up a new tradition through its one-year budget. He recommended that the ruling party should only present the budget of four months. Walk out from National Economic Meeting. Sherpa urges centre to address concerns of the provinces. Qami Watan Party Chairman Aftab Ahmed Sherpa has urged the federal government to address the reservations of three provinces over the budget and public sector development program, saying their walk out from the National Economic Council will increase political temperature in the country. Sherpa, who is also the former federal interior minister, said. Policies of the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz have put the country on the path of political vendetta. Medical stores shutter down strike in Punjab continues on second day. As a result of the closure, patients are in serious trouble as it has become difficult for them to find medicines. The strike is likely to be suspended as it has also put the operations in hospitals at risk. All Pakistan Chemist Association went on a shutdown strike yesterday against the Drug Act 2017. However, they were seen to be divided into two factions wherein one has announced detachment from the protesters. Indian police probe suspected $90 million loan fraud at IDBI Bank. India's federal police agency said on Thursday it was investigating an alleged $90 million loan fraud at IDBI Bank and former senior bank officials were among those being investigated. Searches were being conducted at 50 locations, including New Delhi and Mumbai, for evidence of fraud carried out through the loan accounts of a company registered in the British Virgin Islands 
and a Finnish firm, the Central Bureau of Investigation said in a statement. Taliban killed seven soldiers, deputy governor in Afghanistan. Taliban attack on an Afghan army security post in the country's northern Kunduz province has killed at least seven soldiers, a defense spokesman said on Thursday. Mohammad Rad Manish, the deputy spokesman for the Ministry of Defense, said the attack took place on Wednesday night in the remote Dashti Archi district in Kunduz. A gun battle lasted several hours and along with the seven killed, one soldier was wounded. Radmanish added that 15 Taliban fighters were also killed and 13 were wounded. China and India leaders to hold summit after border row. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will seek to repair strained ties at a summit on Friday after an intense border dispute marred relations last year. Xi will host Modi for what has been described as an informal summit in the central Chinese city of Wuhan on Friday and Saturday. While the last year's high-altitude standoff in the Himalayas has been resolved, the world's most populous countries have a long history of mistrust. Kim Jong-un to set foot on South Korean soil today. North Korea's Kim Jong-un is set to cross the heavily militarized border on Friday for the first summit with South Korea in more than a decade as the old foes seek to end their decades-long conflict and ease tensions over the North's nuclear weapons program. The summit with South Korean President Moon Jae-in will set the stage for Kim to meet with US President Donald Trump in late May or early June in what will be an unprecedented first encounter between sitting leaders of the two countries. Mike Pompeo confirmed as United States Secretary of State. United States Senate voted on Thursday to approve former CIA Director Mike Pompeo as Secretary of State after a bruising battle by Democrats against President Donald Trump's nominee. Pompeo, who earned Trump's confidence after a year at the CIA, was accused by Democrats as being too bellicose and harboring anti-Muslim and homophobic sentiments. But after barely getting the nomination past the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Pompeo was easily confirmed by the entire body in a vote of 57 to 42, with a handful of Democratic senators facing tough re-election battles voting in favor. German Chancellor Angela Merkel in Washington to make Germany heard again. German Chancellor Angela Merkel heads to the White House on Friday for talks with Donald Trump, facing an uphill struggle to save the Iran nuclear deal, avoid a trade war and make her relationship with the US president functional again. The German leader's visit has already been overshadowed by a backslapping three-day festival of fraternite between Donald Trump and French President Emmanuel Macron this week. Acting Armenian Prime Minister rejects talks with opposition leader. Armenia's acting Prime Minister Karen Karapetyan has rejected a proposal by opposition leader Nikol Pishinyan to hold talks on Friday amid entire government protests. Pishinyan said early on Friday he had met with President Armin Sarkisyan to discuss a way out of the political crisis in the country. Bank of Punjab's board approves financial results. A meeting of the board of directors of the Bank of Punjab was held on April 25th 2018, wherein annual audited financial statements for the year ended December 31, 2017 and unaudited financial statements for the first quarter of 2018 ended March 31, 2018 were approved. In a statement, the bank said financial viability created through capital management measures and superb performance in the past few years has enabled it to take an important step of fully providing for the legacy non-performing loans portfolio covered through letters of comfort issued by the government of Punjab as of December 31, 2017. Motor Racing Ricciardo loathed to keep biting lip after surgery. Australia Formula One driver Daniel Ricciardo has never been known for biting his lip when it comes to expressing his opinion. But one of the few times he did, he ended up having minor surgery. The 20-year-old won the China Grand Prix two weeks ago 
and was photographed with a lump on his lower lip, which was more noticeable when he celebrated his victory by drinking the winner's champagne from his racing shoe. Weather Mainly hot and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country. However, light rain thunderstorm may occur at few places in Kashmir and its adjoining hilly areas. Please subscribe to Humsub TV and hit the notification icon on the screen to get the latest updates of our channel. Thank you for watching Humsub TV.